Well, it was uh, a year ago, over a year ago, that the Toronto Raptors claimed the NBA championship. On that night in Oakland, Raptors President Masai Ujiri was involved in an altercation with a sheriff's deputy as he tried to make his way to the court for the trophy presentation. The deputy, Alan Strickland, filed a lawsuit claiming Ujiri, uh, or against Ujiri, claiming he suffered physical, mental, emotional, and economic damages, and that Ujiri was the aggressor. The Raptors president countersued, and now newly released body cam footage shows that it was the deputy who swore at Ujiri and shoved him twice before Ujiri shoved him back. Now, after the Raptors win over Brooklyn this afternoon, Fred Van Vliet addressed that situation. It's heavy stuff, man. It's heavy stuff. Uh, obviously, we are all privileged, and Masai is pretty privileged in, in his world. And um, you just you just stop and think about you know how good we got it because there's there's people who are going to be in that same situation walking down the street who don't have money to fight the case. It's like, how many times do, do cops do things like that without the body cam on, without arena footage? Like, it's a tough situation. So um, it's unfortunate. I think that's why we, we all are in this situation now. And fighting for social injustice and, and equality because you see how quick things can get ugly. And I know how much that bothered Masai Ujiri. I talked to him on one of those NBA togethers and talked about that incident and, and how, you know, what it took away from that night in this the great moment of celebration and reaching this level and then having that, having that happen. And now when you see that body cam footage, pretty it's, much speaks for itself. It's, it's, it's scary because I, 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 I'm not going to act like me and Messiah are great friends, but he's invited me up to Toronto a couple times for a, a Nelson Mandela celebration. He is obviously arguably uh, with uh, the guy in Oklahoma City and the guy in Sam, San Presti. Antonio, Sam Presti and R.C. Uh, RC Buford as the best GM in the league. And he, but he is, he's a great person. He's a man of great class and dignity and I, I got nothing but admiration and respect for him. You know, man, people lie all the time. And when you're famous, people just want to sue you all the time. And he's lucky. Uh, he's lucky that the body cam was there. I mean, because people, when you got money, man, people sue you for no reason and they can smear you. And my attorney, who's amazing, he always say to me, Chuck, let's settle the case. I said, I didn't do anything wrong. He always said to me, he says, it's not about doing anything wrong. He said, jurors, 12 people who were too stupid to get all the jury duty. We can't let them have access to your bank account. And Messiah did what many of us do. He stuck to the G code. Like it happened, I didn't even know it happened until the police officer or the sheriff deputy tried to sue. And uh, but like, like, you know, Chuck says, you know, very unfortunate where you're famous. I'm just glad it didn't escalate. And uh, Fred Van Vliet makes, makes Many great points. You know, a, a lot of us, especially in the streets, have to deal with, with this stuff all the time. Well, I got a chance to know Masao the last two years, two and a half years, pretty well. Uh, the reason you hear all those whistles about me going places is because he said, one, he called me in his office one day. He said, would you like to come up? I'd like to talk to you. I was like, about what? I had never met him in my life. And he said, I think that you would make a great person in the, in, in the front office. So can I be your mentor and tell you how to do it? And so those calls over the last two years are kind of figuring out. So when I heard it, it just threw me off. I was like, what the heck is going that's on? Not him. It's not, like, that's not him. I was like, that's not him. But the, then what really makes it the worst is the fact that these are the people that are supposed to protect and serve you. Not, then, not only the fact that you didn't protect and serve, then you actually went out and these people are going to lie and say that they need to be have reparation or, or, or re have um, restitution. Damages. Yeah. Damages for what you did. So not only taking the, the protect and serve, but taking it to the next level. And that is the issue. And it's not even about, a, it's not even a famous issue. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, a police issue of thought that we've been fighting all this time. And now it's just body cams and cameras and phone cameras that are catching the things that have been happening. And I hope that this man never works on a police force or any, anything of any power, because the only thing that makes it 
accurate is that he has power. If he had no power and, it's, and he shoves you, it's a different scenario. But he has power when he's doing it. So that case still before the courts, that the lawsuit, and uh, we stay tuned for the next chapter in that. We'll take a time out. Be back with more inside in just a sec.